So-called safe injection sites are popping up in cities from New York to San Francisco. Addicts can just shoot up under the supervision of a healthcare worker, and it's paid for by your tax dollars. And if Biden's Justice Department gets its way, these state-sanctioned opium dens are coming to a city near you. So all of you are probably already aware that Jesse Waters is one of the dumbest people on Fox News. I call him, you know, he's just kind of the dumb Chad. He's there to look handsome and say dumb things. But the craziest thing about, you know, how the right typically breaks down drug abuse is they think that no one in their audience may suffer from it. Because the fact is, is that not everybody who uses drugs is homeless and leaning over somewhere. Obviously, Fox News painted drug addicts in the worst light possible. But the fact is, is that the United States for decades has been treating drug use and drug addiction like it's some type of criminal activity, like it's some type of criminal problem when it's a health issue, when it's a medical issue. And I've talked about on this channel before about how several decades ago we used to have mental health clinics uh, set up to where people could go. And mental health has, you know, really gone down over the years. But of course, I'm going to get into some statistics because Fox News and Jesse Waters, they're not going to give you any when it comes to just how many people do drugs and the fact that safe injection sites actually work. Don't look now, it's already happening in Philly. The DOJ is working with some nonprofit to reopen one of these drug dens smack dab in the center of the city's opioid crisis. I'm all for saving lives and getting people back on their feet, but feeding into their addictions, no good. So these are some stats from the American Academy of Family Physicians on um, supervised injection sites. Supervised injection sites improve health outcomes. One study found a 26% net reduction in overdose deaths in the area surrounding a supervised injection site in Vancouver, Canada compared to the rest of the city. A supervised injection site in Barcelona, Spain, was associated with a 50% reduction in overdose mortality from 1991 to 2008. People who inject drugs are significantly less likely to share needles if they regularly use supervised injection sites. These sites could be effective in reducing the rates of HIV and hepatitis C in people who inject drugs. Supervised injection sites can also reduce the number of publicly discarded syringes, and they improve public safety. So again, they're not gonna give you any of that information. And the key important reason why they're not gonna give you that information is because they think that drug addicts don't deserve to be helped. They think that they should be thrown in prison, just swept off the, the streets, just you know, totally discarded from the cities. And we see the same type of attitude and culture that goes into homelessness issues where they put spikes under bridges and they, you know, harshly enforce homeless people just looking for a place to sleep. So again, it's not that they don't know that these things work. It's that they don't care that these things work because they don't think that the human beings who are going through these issues are human beings who deserve help. Obviously, if it was them, they would feel differently, but then it would be different. But that's all this is. It's the same old shit every day. Just listen to Pennsylvania's former federal prosecutor. Opening an injection site would make the crisis worse. Normalizing drug use is not the answer to combating the opioid epidemic. What a novel idea. Don't encourage drug use. Try to end drug use. I mean, when you create centers of drug abuse inside a city, it just attracts addicts and dealers. How long before the Sinaloa cartel sets up shop across the street from a drug injection site? Just give them what they want. And I can even speak just from my own personal drug use. I've never been like, you know, debilitated with it, but I definitely have used cocaine and things along those lines because of my ADHD. I say that importantly because ADHD kids are prescribed things like Adderall, methylphenidate, Ritalin, right? And as an adult, as a kid rather, I didn't really want to take any of my medication. But as an adult, I would self-medicate with cocaine here and there, right? I don't, I don't care if y'all know that. I don't care who gets mad at that. I don't care if you judge me for it. But then when I had access Access to methylphenidate to Ritalin, right? I am totally disinterested in using cocaine now. That is a beautiful example of how approaching drug use in a medical way, instead of just, oh, these people are, are crackheads, these people have problems, we got to sweep them away. I am no longer doing cocaine because I have a safer alternative just for, you know, regular ADHD medication to help me focus, to help me get a lot of work done. I'm a workaholic. I got a lot to do. That's why people do Adderall. Adderall, cocaine, Ritalin, it's all the same. It's just speed, right? But one's illegal and the rest aren't. I'm not even here to talk about that today, but I wanted to give just a quick personal example of how I know personally that this approach works. But of course, like I said, they're not interested in that. They just want to keep everybody down.